Where's the camera? Okay. Uh, what's up, guys? Um, I got a super important video for you here today. It's going to be a multi part video. Um, the first part, I'm going to kind of go through some uh, theory kind of stuff, and then I'll do a separate video later that kind of discusses how it should apply to us. So, I got a little graph here. I'm going to move off to the side so I can narrate. Um, so, first, ignore this red line. We're going to be looking at this line right here. Um, what we have here is on the vertical axis, it's called, uh, it'll be stimulus. So um, the higher up you go, the more stimulus you get. That's going to be the signal for your body to grow, assuming that you're getting proper recovery and good diet and good sleep. Um, that's gonna, going to be what causes you to gain muscle. So the higher up we go, the better. Now on the x-axis, um, this is going to be a theoretical scale none of this is meant to be exact it's a little bit theoretical but um it's it's well vetted in the science so um 10 this is going to be we're doing a set that 10 would be our max okay so um if you if you do 10 then you could not have gotten another rep if you did nine you had one left one rep left in the tank eight you had two reps left in the tank the fact that it goes to 10 is just an example. This could uh, also apply to a set of 15, you know. Um, this would be, you did 15, uh, 14, 13. So it's just an example. Um, the Another way to talk about this is called reps in reserve or how many reps you could have done. If you did 10, you have zero reps in reserve. Nine is one rep in reserve. Eight would be two reps in reserve and so on. So, okay. Um, as you can see over here, uh, getting down to three, you know, we're not even getting close to the point of failure and you can see our stimulus is relatively low. Um, and as you go from three to four, it starts to make a small uptick and uptick once you get to five. If you're further over here, you're not really, uh, it's not that you're not doing anything and you're getting no stimulus, but you can see it's very low. So in general, we want to avoid being on this side of five um, at all costs. Otherwise, we're kind of basically just wasting our time. But once you go from five to six, it's an uptick. And then from six to seven, or th that would also be four IR to three IR, the curve starts to go up. So our stimulus is uh, drastically increasing here in this range. Um, and then seven to eight, still gaining um, stimulus at a very high rate. Then once you see eight to nine and nine to 10, it starts to level off a little bit. So the additional benefit from going this close to failure is still there, but it starts to level off a little bit, okay? So basically anywhere if we're in this, we're in this five to 10 and even closer, six to 10 range is great from a stimulus perspective. Um, I, I would really say that we want to be at least within six to 10 and my preferred range is really from seven to 10. Um, that's just where we get the most reliable stimulus. And then you also have to factor in the fact that, you know, we may not 100% know um, if we're at a, a 10 out of 10 or a zero IR, RIR. Um, so I, I like to stay generally uh, with only three reps, reps left in the tank or less. You know, I don't really like to go much further than that. Um, okay, so let's uh, that's kind of how the stimulus goes as we go along. Uh, let's look at fatigue. That's going to be the pink line here. So the fatigue starts off very low down here. This is kind of the danger zone, the range we won't, don't want to be. The stimulus is very low and it exponentially rises um, as you get closer to failure. Notice how this curve uh, is low and it rises up steeply and then it starts to level off. The fatigue curve doesn't really do that. The closer you get to failure, the higher the fatigue goes. Um, and the way this plays into your um, daily training is that you'll notice once you start pushing those sets closer to failure, your reps drop off for your later sets. That's exactly why we can't do, um, you know, three sets of 10 and, and be optimal. Um, because once you're getting close to failure and you're getting in this seven or, you know, six to 10 or seven to 10 range, 
uh, your fatigue is going to creep up. And that's actually very useful because we can use that um, as an indicator. That's how we know we're getting close enough to failure. If you did 10 on your first set and you can only do eight on your second set, well, you know we're in the right range and we're going to give what we came for. So uh, this does have some other implications, though. Um, if you push every set to absolute failure, you can see here the fatigue's very high. Um, that fatigue can really start to build up over here. And you can actually see the fatigue's higher than the stimulus. So um, that would come into play. Imagine if you were training uh, six or seven days a week and you're um, pushing your fatigue up or you're going, you know, all the way to failure on every single set, your fatigue is going to skyrocket and you may not be able to maintain that for a long period of time. Um, in our case, you know, we're not necessarily, uh, we're only training three times a week for about an hour. We're not going crazy, crazy with it. So um, it's not as big of a concern going over here. Um, but uh, yeah, so that that's kind of how the proximity to failure um, and the relationship to stimulus and fatigue works. Um, the later videos I do will kind of uh, explain a little bit more about how both the stimulus and the fatigue in relation to proximity to failure play into our specific examples, um, or sorry, our specific situations. So uh, that's what I wanted to get across today, guys. Good job. Love the training videos. Keep it up, and I'll talk to you soon.